Okay, being on black folks, I'm basically we're on a layover of, and then Helio viewer did this, and they are very honest. When they lay the pictures over, they take the shots and just lay them on top of each other. Uh, and even NASA has to because each satellite, each lens, even if they're all on the same satellite or whatever, they have to take different shots. And you got to remember, we got Spitzer up there, and then there's Lasco. There's all kinds of different. We're not going to get into that lingo because basically, to get all tongue tied and try to show you. Now, if you, like I say, view it on a laptop. I'm working off a laptop right now. I go from my laptop to my computer. But the idea you can change the angle of the light in your screen, and you can see. And right now, on here, you can see the magnetical on the north. Now, I don't know if they consider the con quadrants and stuff like that. See, because they have a quadrant map, and I have that, too, for studying the sun, for sunspots and so forth and everything like that. But no matter what, what we see on HeliViewer, we see these stars and also the electrical magnetism of this portion of the sun, which I would, in my viewing of it right now, I'm going to just call it north because it's up there. So you can see that honeycomb, uh, actually honeycomb is the wrong word, but the idea that the upper, like a bee's nest right there, and the upper magneticals of the sun, you can see them, and I've shown you in the black and whites. Now these are stars that are out to the right and the left, okay, and I'm not showing you that right now, because basically I'm trying to get to it. But as we come down here, as they overlay these shots, you're going to be able to see in the the green portion you can see the stars there. I can point to them real good here and then I'm basically going to blow up into this so you can actually see that that's what this is. And it's basically the umbilical cord of the star belt that the sun is tied to and it follows. So through our Milky Way galaxy. Presumably our Milky Way galaxy. Uh, and yes, as far as we know that's the lingo that we speak and so forth. Now no matter what, we would follow these stars, and I've proved to you from the uh, on the ground down at uh, Nehemiah Station. I've proved to you that these stars are out in front of the sun on Earth side. Now this is not Earth side. Basically, Earth side, since this is either A or B shots, is that the idea that the Earth would be more than likely uh, percentages would be over here to the left somewhere, okay, off out here in space, okay, so. And then there's colorization and everything like that on each one of those layers, and then they cover. They can always cover up something if they want to. Okay. Uh, so basically, we we get close and get to see a lot of stuff that is close by, because basically they just do computerization and show you the highlights that they want to see. They can always hide something that's out away from the sun, and even on the sun, because they have control of the pixels and the painting in the uh, colorization. Now that's why I like giving you the navy shots because they're black and white and they're live and I can zoom in on them and now they've shut me out from getting in there and getting into you because I was zooming in and showing you that you can see the exact what is a star and what's a planet and everything like that. Okay, Because they're live pictures, not pixelated. Then when you go to save them they end up being pixelated Okay, because of the software. So they have control of the software so that's the problem. You see? So and it's all proprietary and everything like that. So we're going to get on these stars because basically you can see a blue cross there, a blue and a red, and it's all atomic. Okay, atomic energy, electrical out in space, and here's stars here also. So basically, there is a bunch of stars that are small, way smaller than the Earth, that end up being around and in front, and uh, also behind. And it's all electrically connected, uh, and then the sun travels at probably 70,000 plus miles an hour. We are on average of 60,000 miles an hour, which saves us from burning up and hitting in, you know, into the sun. We stay back and uh, oscillate around the sun, rotate around, not completely flat in a flat line around, and then we rotate to the east to the sun, and basically we spiral around like a bullet around, just like how the sun basically has a spiral and on its travel through our Milky Way galaxy. Okay. So now we're going to zoom in on these stars that are that you're seeing right in front of your face, okay? Because when I get up on the pointer now, I can't point, you see? So I won't be able to point to this, 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 and basically they're stars. And everybody looks at it from the long distance way, and oh man, we, we thought that there was, and then they kept on telling us, oh, it's a piece of felt on the lens, or something like that, fuzz on the lens, bull crap. It's basically the star belt that basically magnetically the sun is tied to. Now I can't get into Sechi right now either, 
So we're going to end up stuck on beacon, like you've seen the video I did last night, of beacon and everything like that. So we're going to pump up. I won't be able to point at this stuff once we get, you know, but we're going to take a look at it, especially the blue, the blue and the, the blue and the red, these stars doing their rotation when they rotate real fast. Now, you got to remember that I am not denying that there is helium on the sun, okay? But see, that's what another thing is NASA can get all these readings and I'm going to have to start diving into seeing how much they read on their data and stuff like that. I'm going to start getting looking at boring stuff like data instead of actual pictures is what we just want to see what it looks like, okay? So as you can see, as I zoom up, you can see stars, okay? And then we're on the blue and the, on the blue and the red. Okay, now what you're going to see right here is basically spooky because basically it's what uh, the nuclear reaction that basically Einstein talked about and everything like that. And I get this out of the way. And as you can see, the pixels here basically it's going red, blue, and it's basically the spectrum of the rainbow of nuclear reaction. Okay, and basically it's nuclear reaction. Stars are nuclear, uh, and basically electrical and magnified together. Okay. Atoms cling to each other. It's physics. It's known uh, atomic knowledge. Okay, that basically nuclear radii, beta gamma, will cling and uh, attach to each other f from massive distances. And yes, almost infinite in space distances. That's how everything clings together in space. It doesn't completely fall apart. It's the DNA makeup of space. Okay, nuclear. Nuclear, 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 nuclear. Yeah, CPM and RADS, okay? Beta gamma, okay? These light flashes. And you can watch the, the uh, webcams at Fuka Fudge up and you'll see the nuclear radii. Uh, you'll see these red, blue, green, and stuff like that uh, in yellow. Uh, in a, just when you're watching the nighttime footage of Fuka Fudge up, you, get to the, you can go get live w uh, links to the Fuka Fudge up plant. I should need, I should put that link on my. I'll try to in the future get that link on my links that I put on when it says pull more tab below my videos. So basically the movie played. So I'm in a different look of the stars. So we're gonna get a look at these and I'll see if I can get close to back on uh, the red and the blue that we were zooming in on. But it started playing. But basically it is all the same star cluster here that we're seeing. It's just in a different part of the movie. And you'll see that we're lucky that we get to see in the first place because. The flaring that the sun does, it, it calmed down just enough to be able to see the stars that we have. Now I'll move on really softly, and remember I can't point to anything. I can kind of take, I mean you can see the stars, I'm bringing the handle up the side of those stars there. Okay, so these stars are deep, massive distances in space, millions of miles away from the sun. Some are closer than the others. Some are between us and Earth that I showed you on the Neomar footage. Okay. Go watch my stuff that has Nehemiah uh, titles. I'd have to go to the end. I'll try to, I guess, fit on the end of this movie. I'll go to the deal and show you some movies if you're new in here. And that's some stars. Then, so space. We're getting this footage from 11:23, and it plays for a long time. But you'll see these stars that we are umbilically cord tied to. Basically, I call it an umbilical cord because it's an easy way of explaining to people. It's like a like the innards of your intestines and, and basically uh, an umbilical cord when, a, when you're at birth and then the idea that we're magnetically tied, the earth is, to the sun and the sun is magnetically tied to the nuclear uh, magnetics physics of the Milky Way galaxy. And if you look at the galaxy from a long ways away, also it looks like a the Milky Way galaxy looks like the top of a milkshake or, you know, in a blender or, you know, a swirl. And basically, uh, intestines, uh, sausage laying on a meat cutter's table right after it's been stuffed, you see? So basically, it's all a chain. Everything's a chain reaction. Uh, nuclear chain reaction, okay? And then magnetics and the stars and so forth. And then so we'll get in here on our zoom. And then we will hopefully not get bumped out of the movie and as you can see the reaction the nuclear because the star action on that side also so all the stars the sun is tied to out there pretty much and then the, the heaviest magnetical the super giants the largest stars now we got our red and our blue there again so let me get the uh, as you can see it right there 
and as you see the dark, and you see how they pixelate. Now they like to see it, NASA does, but at the same time they try to somewhat, you know, see. So a satellite gets a shot of this, and then they put all these shots together, and then they make a movie. So we're stuck with their software of what they will produce and let us see. Okay, so we're getting to see this, and then we're going to glue in on this because this is radioactive uh, light that you're seeing, the colors that you see, and basically that's what they see when they look into space. That's why the uh, astronauts do not like to, uh, they're not going to take and give you a shot out into space. They always just shoot Earth, because otherwise everything else is just a blur of blink, like a big neon. It's just a big pixelization. Okay, now, if I stay over here and I move softly, we'll get in on our, you see, we're getting in on our blue, and you see it's the, to the left of that red, it's kind of like white. And then we'll get in some more. move around and there's a blue star okay helium but as you can see I think what NASA and everything the physicists are starting to understand is the idea that there's really no such thing as a helium star it's just that when they go white dwarf they end up spinning faster <clears throat> so as the Sun gets older it'll start spinning faster and I think that's basically what's going on is they're worried about the idea that the Sun is speeding up okay and yes, then our clocks will change because our clock goes by the sun, you see. So when we start getting a short calendar, it's going to take a long time in the future to get, we're still at 365 point whatever days in a year. But in the future, 300, 3,000 years from now, it'll end up being a shorter calendar year because it'll be 364 point whatever. Okay, <clears throat> so the sun seems to be picking up in speed. Uh, it's going to take a long time. It's just the idea that when we start seeing a big increase, then the physicists and stuff get worried. Well, that's why we need to work on space travel and getting out into space. Okay? So we basically went from that, those blue, and you can see the white stars. So white in the blue are more helium stars. The sun is somewhat considered a hydrogen star, but it eventually will end up being a helium star. And then they kind of somewhat need to uh, retract their statement. It's basically the secret of hydrogen to helium, okay? And it's not really a secret, it's a scientific fact. And I'll give you that structure in the future. But so there, here's you got your red star, basically a hydrogen and white, and a hydrogen star up by a helium star, and then a helium star. And those magneticals are basically uh, magnetically connecting to the Sun right now and as you see the upper layer here and I can even get rid of that magnifier and then you can see the upper layer on the Sun of the magnetical and the colorization of the nuclear reactions and the Sun is a nuclear fusion okay and it's basically going to have helium oxygen hydrogen everything okay carbon everything it's got the elements of everything in, in our universe and the magnetical. It's gravity. We are electronically magnetized to the Earth. It's mass with uh, Newton's law because the largest thing is going to be electrically tied down. But they didn't, he never Newton never talked about electrical magnetical. But we are electrically magneted to the Earth's surface. It's our yes, it's our atmosphere because we have gravity. We have more magnetical than other planets out there. Okay. So, at least we have way more uh, magnetical than the moon, you see, so gravity. But then the moon might have a more gravity than what they're letting on to, too. And the moon, as I've showed you scientifically, it's hot up there, okay, very hot on the moon. 300-some degrees. Now, see, this is all from last month, and I was shooting in on the right-hand side here, okay? So that shows you that umbilical cord even more, and then basically I'll just let this movie play real fast, and <clears throat> we'll have more in the next videos, and as you can see, the dates and times on this was all last month. So we're kind of locked out of Sechi right now because of all the fabulous action that I had in uh, Holy Ship Captain Bino Black, so basically more in the future here. So keep, in t keep checking the videos out. Bino Black out for now. So we'll get whatever I can get later today from the other sources, Soho Beacon. So.
Uh, I don't watch my tape count.